In March 2023, Porsche announced it would not be pursuing their attempt to get onto the F1 grid any further. The strange part was this was only 10 months after announcing its entry. So what exactly happened? The Volkswagen Group, which owns both the Audi and Porsche brands, has long been flirting with the idea of joining Formula One, but nothing over the years had ever come about. Then in May in 2022, there was finally an announcement. Volkswagen chief Herbert Dice announced both Audi and Porsche would be joining Formula One, saying, You can't enter Formula One unless a technology window opens up, which means, in order to get in there, a rule change, so that everyone starts again from the same place. Porsche has to be the sportiest car brand in the world, so Porsche has to do motorsport. You come to the conclusion, if Porsche does motorsport, the most efficient thing is to do Formula One. But why join now? Formula One had been on an upward trend in terms of its appeal, and on the back of that, growth in the US and Asian markets, especially with younger audiences. Coupled with the fact both Audi and Porsche attended provisional engine regulation meetings for 2026, gave it a perfect time to join the sport. Now there are a number of ways manufacturers or teams can enter Formula One. Audi were going to build an engine, so they were looking to buy into an existing team. Porsche didn't have a power unit under development, and it didn't have any existing facilities to build one either, something that would be impossible to change with the timescales remaining, so it was left to buy into a team that already had an engine in place. Couldn't Porsche have just used Audi's engine and built its own team? Unfortunately, it's not that simple. Porsche is seen as a prestige brand, with Audi more mainstream. It wouldn't do the Porsche brand well to be supplied by its lesser sibling. Besides, although both manufacturers are owned by Volkswagen, they're still rivals and run entirely separately. Audi's chairman of the board, Marcus Deussmann, said, We decided, as both our brands have a lot of fans and both our brands have their special character, to keep it completely separate and do two operations. Rumours had circulated about Porsche joining with Red Bull, something that seemed all but confirmed in June 2022 when this document was released. This document, accidentally published by Morocco's Conseil de la Concurrence, contained two key sections. The first, a merger between the parent Red Bull GmbH company and Porsche, with the aim of manufacturing a power unit. The second referred to an acquisition of 50% shares in Red Bull Technology Limited, Red Bull's main F1 operations company. Essentially, Porsche wanted to buy into the Red Bull team 50-50, thus creating a Red Bull Porsche team with the likely a Porsche named engine. With Red Bull already having all of the F1 operations under one roof, including chassis and engine, it looked likely Porsche would support as a sponsor. Red Bull and Porsche didn't comment on the document, but in a Sky F1 interview, Christian Horner hinted at what kind of partnership it would hypothetically be. Well, Red Bull Powertrains, you know, is, the, is, is, is established, it's there, it's got its technical management under, obviously, uh, you know, Ben Hodgkinson and, the, and the, you know, everything is in, in place. If a partner like, you know, a Porsche was to come along, it would be only natural for it to plug into, you know, what is already, is already there and to, to complement it. Um, so, you know, it would be tremendously exciting if an OEM like a Porsche or an Audi did come into Formula One. It all sounded like it was a matter of time before something was announced but both Porsche and Audi wanted the new 2026 engine regulations to be signed off before finally committing to entering F1. This happened on 16th of August 2022. The next step would be for Porsche to finally confirm its joint venture with Red Bull. But time went on. At the Dutch Grand Prix, Christian Horner was questioned on how the relationship with Porsche was progressing. Uh, Christian, we've been reading a lot of reports this week saying that it, it might not be as secure as, as perhaps we were talking about earlier this season. Well, there's not really too much to, uh, you know, to report. I mean, you know, as I've consistently said, we're pushing on with Red Bull powertrains. You know, it's making you know, great strides with the fire up of the first ever Red Bull you know, engine um, a couple of weeks ago. So, uh, you know, 2026 is a long way away um, and we're, you know, we're very focused on, on our plan, on, on the engine that we're producing with it the talent that we're bringing into the team and uh, it's great to see Audi coming into the sport. Um, you know, a anything that, that Red Bull would consider would, would have to fit you know, with the long-term strategy of the team and, uh, uh, you know, as I said, there's, there's plenty of time ahead. With his insistence on any partnership having to fit in with the Red Bull team, this didn't sound like a guy who was about to announce one. And then on the 9th of September 2022, Porsche released a statement. In the course of the last few months, Porsche and Red Bull have held talks on the possibility of Porsche's entry into Formula One. 
The two companies have now jointly come to the conclusion that these talks will no longer be continued. The premise was always that a partnership would be based on an equal footing, which would include not only an engine partnership, but also the team. This could not be achieved. With the finalised rule changes, the racing series nevertheless remains an attractive environment for Porsche, which will continue to be monitored. With negotiations behind closed doors and such a short press release, speculation built as to where it all went wrong. So let's look at some likely points on why the deal collapsed. 1. Red Bull would have to cede control. For when Porsche made the announcement earlier in the season, the team had gone from strength to strength and on the way to title success. Why would it want to change that? 2. Car companies bring bureaucracy. Red Bull's decisions in F1 are pretty much made by Christian Horner. Bringing on a car company would likely bring a board of directors and thus a longer decision-making procedure. Christian Horner said at the Italian Grand Prix, We are a race team fundamentally and that enables us to make quick decisions and react very quickly. I think we've seen on so many occasions manufacturers have been less autonomous in their decision-making. That was a key aspect of protecting what we have and how we operate which has proved to be reasonably successful. In the early hybrid days, Red Bull had previously fallen out with Renault over their engines and lack of performance. Christian Horn illuminated some of these frustrations on the High Performance Podcast in 2021. We had a very clear area that was our Achilles heel, which was you know, our engine wasn't as powerful as our competitors. So, okay, how can we push our engine supplier? So we, we tried every possible tactic I must have gone to Paris three or four times to sit down with Carlos Ghosn, the, the chairman mm. of the time, to say, look, if you're in this business and want to, you're spending a hell of a money, but you might need to spend just a little bit more and a little bit more wisely. Otherwise, you're wasting what you're, mm. you know, you're currently spending. You're not getting a return from that. But his heart was never in Formula 1. It was just a marketing thing that ticked, ticked the box that passion and drive and you were never going if he didn't have it how could you expect that to flow through his his organization if red bull wanted to continue their success they wouldn't want to be put in another situation where they had to convince what would ultimately be their partner in pushing for performance three what is porsche bringing red bull builds its own cars soon its own engine and it has all the funding it needs bringing in a partner that seems to only be bringing money nothing technical but asking for a controlling stake in the team is a lot. Could all this have been down to arrogance from Porsche, seeing themselves as a prestige brand and thinking current F1 teams would be falling over themselves to have a partnership with them? Perhaps. Time would tell, but it was rapidly running out of time to secure its place on the grid. In October 2022, it was confirmed Sauber would become the Audi F1 works team, taking over their facilities in Switzerland but building their own engine in a new factory in Germany. Job done and ready for 2026. But where did this lead Porsche? In terms of teams, here were the options. Mercedes, Ferrari and Alpine are fellow car manufacturers who would never be considered to buy into any of these. McLaren and Aston Martin. Audi had already had talks with McLaren about its purchase, which got nowhere. There were rumours Porsche had also approached McLaren and Aston Martin, but talks didn't progress. Williams and Haas are not necessarily getting anywhere fast in terms of progress on the grid. Thought of as a prestigious team, Porsche would have wanted to hit the ground running and fight for victories from the beginning. As 2022 went on, there had been no further developments or hints that Porsche was pursuing another team, and in December, the driving force behind Porsche's entry into F1, Vice President of Motorsport Fritz Enzinger, retired. It was said after this that F1 operations were quietly wound down. In March 2023, Porsche made a final announcement. Motorsport will always be at the core of our brand identity. Formula 1 remains an interesting racing series for us. For the next years, we're concentrating on the current factory programs with the Porsche 963 and the FIA World Endurance Championship and North American IMSA series, as well as in the Formula E World Championship with the Porsche 99X Electric. There we want to fight for overall victories. That is our tradition and our main focus. Without saying it specifically, Porsche's time in F1 was over before it even started. Unlike its sister team, Audi, who had first approached McLaren but was turned down, they modified their approach and went for Sauber, securing the deal. Porsche had only one plan and didn't change their demands. It's surprising negotiations got as far as they did with Red Bull because Porsche was offering very little in terms of technical support but wanted a big stake in the team and it would have complicated Red Bull's leadership processes. Whether it was naivety, ego or arrogance that got in the way of their bid, either way, the 
Porsche name won't be on the grid in 2026. See you on the next lap.